us about uh, Volvo. I mean, like Volvo was uh, the first press conference that we had yesterday. It was so Volvo is, is the brand that kickstarted the whole Buzzword uh, Europe for this edition. So tell us about your presence here at the Expo. How important this Expo is, and uh, how was the response so far from visitors? I think first of all, uh, this is the very first Buzzword Europe Expo in Brussels. Right. For the last 27 years, this was held in Kotrak. And because the bus industry around the world has grown so much that uh, more space was required. Right. And that brings all of us here together for the first one in Brussels. Right. Uh, this is important for Volvo. We've been participating in this since it started 27 years back. Okay. And uh, we have a number of our modern products, both on the city side and the coach side on display. Mm -hmm. And we have customers coming from all around the world. So this is a fairly important event from our perspective. Okay, right. So tell us about your uh, the premier products that uh, you have displayed here. Uh, and uh, is there any theme or vision for this uh, Expo assets from Volvo that you have uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, kind of like displayed uh, the whole product? I would say that when it comes to the commercial vehicle industry, Volvo is a strong brand. Uh, with the presence of almost 100 years now or over 90 years now and whatever we do we do to match our core values of quality safety care for the environment okay. so it is with this theme always our exhibitions and the products displayed thereby are presented right. and uh, the theme very much here is on two areas when it comes to the long distance, then we have our new coach, which was lost, uh, which was launched during last year in right. Europe. Right. And then when it comes to city buses, there is a heavy transition, as we have observed over the last eight, ten years, towards electromobility. And in addition to our other electric products, we are also showing our first articulated electric bus okay. for uh, for our display here for uh, public transport. So these these are some of the things. And then of course there are a lot of services. Fleet management is coming in. Uh, there is the industry is highly uh, stepping towards more safety features, more regulations and thereby the additional features whether like a dynamic steering or lane change etc. All those features for our customers are displayed here at the exhibition. So talking about the articulated electric buses, so that's something uh, kind of a very novel uh, uh, kind of setup. And uh, so, what are the major markets that you find these kind of articulated electric buses or uh, higher scope? Uh, perhaps like since this show is more uh, European focused, is that uh, the reason why you chose the platform to launch the product? I think electromobility is the next step, moving in from combustion engines now over the coming 20 to 30 years. Keeping that in mind, we see that, uh, and we have been one of the pioneers in this field. Uh, as the battery technology has evolved further and become better, it is possible to create better, longer public transport solutions. And thereby, from a normal standard 12, 13 meter electric bus, what we display here is a longer 18 meter articulated bus, which can carry more passengers and also. Uh, in, during peak hours uh, is when you really need these articulated services to get in more people, especially during the morning rush hour and the evening rush hour. Most of the tenders we see at this stage coming in different parts of uh, Europe are primarily focused on also a lot on electric and an articulated is a strong solution to carry more people at a better level of uh, cost and thereby uh, give them a more safe and comfortable solution. As far as electric buses are concerned, which are the major markets that you find uh, are higher, having higher scope for these kind of products as of now? Uh, presently, I think that electric is very much in drive, very much in Europe. Uh, we see that there are selectric uh, countries. Uh, China, of course, is where you have the largest population of electrics. If we can say that 80% of the electric bus population today actually is in China. Uh, Europe is soon transitioning towards electric and as I said most of the public tenders now coming in are focused on electric but then we also see other places in the world parts of North America parts of Asia selected places in Middle East Africa 
uh, where electric solutions are coming in in a small way and over the years will improve as the battery technology improves. Okay. So, uh, basically in terms of product technology, how does Volvo see uh, these different technologies starting from electric, uh, pure electric buses to hybrid electric to uh, regular Euro 6 uh, diesel buses? So, are uh, the electric uh, products complementary to the existing conventional product lines or uh, uh, yeah, yeah, it's the inverter, uh, the upside down? So, I think as Volvo with 90 years presence in the automobile segment, uh, we have a strong face when it comes to commercial vehicle products or trucks, buses, construction equipment. In the bus industry, it's normal for our customers in this part of the world to run the product for at least 15 to 20 years. And that is today quite possible with the diesel engine products which we have. And our customers have a similar expectations with the change of technology but they would like the same lifespans to apply. Okay. So therefore, uh, to keep the customer wishes, whatever we produce, manufacture uh, and bring in as technology, it has to live the life cycle of uh, 15 to 20 years. And uh, I'm happy to state that uh, the buses which we produce, whether they are full diesel or hybrid or electric hybrid or full electric 12 meter or articulated, all of them will live with these values and the customers will get the full life cycle cost of what they have invested in. Okay. And uh, another uh, progressive technology is uh, autonomous uh, technology. Yes. Buses. And uh, as we know, like Volvo buses is uh, making striding progress in Africa. So tell us a little bit about that uh, and where, which are the markets or what could be the timeline where we can see those products being commercially launched and we can probably see that on our roads. Right. If I start with, I think when electrics, we started to talk about it about 10 years back, uh, everyone thought that this will take, it, take a long time. But just within 10 years, we find that most of the world is now switching over to electrics. Uh, similarly, what's happening in the world today in our field is that there are three technologies which are matching themselves. Electromobility, connectivity and autonomous solutions. So, these three technologies will merge themselves one way or the other as we move on. On electric, we have moved over the last 10 years quite a distance with battery technology improving, capacity of uh, the batteries improving and thereby it is possible then to have full electric buses running in cities or a little bit on the commuter sector. When it comes to autonomous, uh, it's a start in the last couple of years. So, as Volvo, we are again the pioneers in this field also. And we started uh, early this year in January, the trials of the first 12 meter autonomous buses in Singapore uh, on a dedicated test track as well as on a depot, bus depot for autonomous solutions where a bus can go in itself, it can uh, charge itself, it can clean itself and then it can park itself. The technology we feel still is not at a stage where an autonomous solution can run by itself on public roads. I think that could take another at least 10 12 years is is uh, is is let's say my personal take on it but uh, the levels of uh, autonomy uh, solutions on the buses or with the development of artificial intelligence that would keep on improving so that will keep on adding to the normal bus operation of improving the safety for the driver uh, reducing the fatigue level as well as improving the driving conditions. So, I think that uh, from a public interest point of view, it's a very good moment, but it will still take time for autonomous solutions to become way of life. Okay, so, I mean, you say that it's not something, a very different transition as such, but a kind of a progressive one. See, starting like uh, yesterday, we just drove the 9900 and uh, it has the most late detection, uh, the autonomous braking. So, it's a kind of a, a transition of that technology uh, will be that, the uh, so pinnacle of that technology will be autonomous. That Yes, I mean 9900 is a coach. The coach of today is very different from a coach of 10 years back. As you said yourself, dynamic steering, uh, braking, pedestrian braking, lane changing, uh, lane detention, uh, other object detention. So, there are lots of features which have come in which make it safer for the people traveling in it and also for the driver to have less fatigue and therefore focus more on the roads. Coming back to autonomous solutions, I would say that we have to keep in mind that today there are not even common harmonized legislations around the world 
under which you can operate an autonomous product. So the very much the driver is here to stay. Um, I always say that in the commercial jet industry, most of the jets can land by themselves, take off by themselves. But we, once traveling in that, always want the pilot to be there. And that's exactly also very much the condition in a bus where people feel safe when a driver is sitting there. So maybe the fatigue level for the driver will go down, uh, the, the, the safety features will go up, but full autonomous solution would take some time. And uh, Mayor, uh, like leading electric uh, mobility technologies into the long distance uh, segments, like intercity buses, say for 99 years. So, what timeline, uh, according to you, would be the way we can see uh, a Volvo 1900? There are a couple of object, uh, objectives which are met with electric solutions. Uh, a is primarily the environment, the pollution reduction. B is the noise level yeah? and C is also end of the day whether it's an electric bus or a, a truck it has to make commercial uh, income for operators be it a city bus company be it a private operator and so on and so forth so it has to be a self-sustained sustaining profitable commercial solution and that is very much today possible on when we see the benefits the electric buses given the public transport city area. When it comes to long distance, I still think that uh, it will come. Uh, the battery capacity is still not at a stage where uh, you can fully drive around with electric solutions for very long distances. Uh, and it has started to come, but for shorter distances. As the technology improves, I think that there is a clear chance that uh, this will go well. So moving on, in terms of uh uh, Volvo buses, international buses, which are the major market regions uh, that Volvo is uh, already catering to and which are the other developing markets that Volvo may enter in the upcoming, uh, say, five years already? Uh, I'm responsible for the international division for Volvo buses now for uh, over seven years. And during this period, we have made good strides all across. We have had a strong presence in Europe, to some extent in Americas. And then over the last seven, eight years, we have had immense success with moving into different parts of the world. So in international, I would say that uh, we have today in most of the leading countries or leading cities of the world a dominant position with about 30 to 50 percent market share in the public transport, long distance or the city bus segment. Uh, prominent among them are uh, Singapore where almost uh, you could say 70-80% of the double-deckers are Volvo and we have recently made supplies of 50 hybrids there so they are changing technology and as I said earlier we are doing autonomous electric with them. Prominent among them is Australia where we have almost over 40% market share in the, in the city bus segment. We have then Hong Kong where all, over 50% of the buses in Hong Kong transport are from Volvo, again uh, double-deckers and they have now recently moved over with a few hundred uh, Euro 6 uh, buses from Euro 5. So th that is a very good development for us. We are supplying in the coming one year uh, almost 700 Volvos, both coaches and city buses will hit the roads in UAE, uh, primarily in Dubai and Abu Dhabi and in Dubai primarily for the coming World Export 2020, which starts in uh, July uh, 2020, uh, we, we continue with the strong market share in places like South Africa, in uh, Morocco, India of course in the premium segment, uh, Volvo is uh, pretty strong with about almost 90% uh, presence there in long distance segment and uh, also then in the city segment. Uh, so I would say that uh, over the years we have grown immensely in Southeast Asia, Oceanic, in India, in Middle East, in Africa, and now we are focusing a bit on some parts of uh, CIS, which is uh, Russia and others, as a future strategy. So coming to India, uh, as you said, Volvo is the, is, the, is the single brand that kind of redefined the entire intercity travel uh, in the last, say, almost two decades. Right? So what are the plans for Volvo versus anything specific to India in the upcoming years, especially with next year, the Euro 6 kicking in? Can we expect more product lines or uh, even the city bus market is yet to be uh, being 
have very limited products in that uh, space as well. What are your plans for the Indian market? So I would say on one hand, India is the world's second largest bus market by volume. Uh, at the same time, of course, I have a, a strong emotional connect uh, to India, uh, being a person of Indian origin and having uh, had the privilege to start Volvo buses there. I think that uh, in India, the bus industry has come a long way. Having said that, of course, at this moment, we know that the complete automobile industry, including cars and commercial vehicles, are going through probably one of the toughest phases uh, with the industry at a uh, new low. And the first thing we do are uh, hoping at this moment that uh, there are some measures being taken by the government and we would like to see that uh, that part is well received out in the market and the business picks up. So very much the focus is for sustenance at the moment like any other automobile company at this stage in India. Having said that, then I think the government has taken a good initiative to move from Euro 4 to BS4 to BS6 technology from April uh, next year. That fits in very well to the Volvo agenda. We today make uh, Euro 3, Euro 4, Euro 5, Euro 6 products around the world and most of our products are turning to be Euro 6. So therefore BS6 coming in is good. It's a high technology product where the emission levels have to be uh, rather much cleaner than what we, they were with the other emission levels uh, with 2 or 3 or 4 as we've had in India and that would mean that uh, better technology would play a much important role in BS6 uh, vehicles and Volvo is already doing that for six, seven years around the world. So we feel we are ready for that and uh, we will take that on in a good way. On the other hand, when it comes to new products, I think that uh, at this moment the focus is very much for the transition from BS4 to BS6 technology. But as to one time goes by and the market comes back, we do think that we will have some new products, but uh, nothing immediately at this stage. As, uh, as just now we were, you were, we were discussing that the bus market in India is kind of picking up. So, when you expect this very product for India? Well, we have uh, hybrids made on this platform already in India. Uh, and when it comes to electric at this stage, uh, from our perspective, we still feel that uh, the market is not ready. As and when we see the situation changing, we will certainly be there. Volvo has uh, strong manufacturing and commercial facilities out in India uh, over the last 20 years. So it's just a matter of time. And uh, since, uh, since uh, uh, countries like India, which are, do not have a proper infrastructure for electric vehicles, yes. do you think like the hybrid vehicles have a better kind of potential in those markets? Absolutely. Than Europe or other? Absolutely. Countries? Hybrid, not only in India, but uh, all over Asia, Middle East, Africa, we think that hybrid is a very good solution because there is no external charging facility or infrastructure required. And you still can save about 30 to 40 percent depending on the conditions, reduc reduction in uh, reduction in the emission level as well as in the fuel usage because of the combination of smaller engines with batteries. So that's a very good solution. However, I think when it comes to electric in India, I still think that it's a very tropical market, especially for summers. The battery technology for premium buses in city or long distance has not reached a segment where, where has not reached a stage where uh, the batteries can fully support the uh, air conditioning inside a bus. So that's why we are at this moment a little bit careful. As we said, the battery technology is improving and you know, it's a matter of uh, time when we will have better capacities and probably then you will see Volvo electric buses in India. Okay. We are actually looking for that exciting time and uh, how so sooner it comes. I hope it will transform the bus industry in India as well. Thanks sir, thank you, thank you for spending us time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.